Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So lately I've been working on my upcoming C Sharp course. My goal is for the video part of the course to be free, kind of like my Kitchen Chaos course, and then have an optional paid version. In a future video I'll talk about my specific plan to make free courses with optional paid versions and do so in a sustainable manner. Right now I'm still working on this one. I've already fully written the beginner and the intermediate sections covering lots of things. If I was just making a normal video course it would almost be done by now, but I really wanted to make something special, so I've been working on a really interesting companion project to help you learn better. Basically the absolute best way to learn anything is to actually do something. If you're an absolute beginner you don't learn much by just blindly watching a video. You need to actually write code in order to learn and fully understand what the code is doing. This is also why so many people get stuck in what they call tutorial hell. They just watch tons and tons of tutorial videos or courses but never actually do anything so they feel like they never graduate to being able to build their own projects. So in order to help people truly learn, lately I've been building some really interesting interactive exercises. These basically ask you to do something related to the lecture, so the goal is watch the lecture, learn everything from it and then actually put it into practice. These exercises exist inside a Unity project and I've basically built some really interesting editor windows to handle all of it. So on the top bar I can just go into the main window. And if here it is, pretty simple, just a list of the various lectures. And then for example, let's say you watch a lecture on variables. Say you watch a lecture and pay very close attention. Then you come to this Unity project, open up this main window and select this lecture on variables. Then there's a bunch of interesting things. Let's see the exercises. And yep, this opens up the exercise window. And now here we can see various exercises, like let's say this one, define a speed variable. So the goal with this one is to edit the script exercise.cs to the a variable of type int with the name speed and assign the value 5 to it. So now I can click on start exercise to start it. And basically what this is, is it adds a bunch of files that I prepared previously onto the project. So now like the exercise says, we need to edit this script, so let's open it. And following the goal, we need to define some kind of int variable. But now in order to show another thing that I've also been building, I'm actually going to intentionally write some bad code. So I'm going to write int with capital, so this is not going to work. So int, then let's call it speed equals four, something like this. Okay, so let's save this code and back into Unity. And if down here is yet another window, so this is the CodeMonkey companion window. And basically this window is listening to a bunch of errors that show up on the console. and also has context of which exercise is active. And using that I can show a much better window that should hopefully be a lot more explanatory than what you see over here in the console window. Since I've read literally thousands upon thousands of comments in all the videos that I've made for this channel, because of that I do know the common errors that beginners actually have. So I can write some custom messages for some common errors that I know beginners do encounter. So by looking at this message, it should hopefully be more clear than the message over here in the console. So did you accidentally type int or int instead of int? Remember how code is case sensitive? So if a beginner made this mistake, hopefully this should be clear. So now let's go ahead and try replacing it with int and save. And back into Unity, wait for it to compile. And right now there's no error, but the exercise is still in progress, so still not done. Because like it says here, we need to write the exercise exactly as it needs to. As always in my course, I always try to teach good practices. And the best practice that beginners really need to learn is simply the fact that code has to be exact. So over here I specifically made it to listen to an int type, specifically made it to listen to the speed name, and specifically made to listen to the actual value. So if the speed is not written exactly like this, like for example like I wrote here with capital S, then this does not work. And again on the companion window down here this one also shows a warning. So again another message that should hopefully help you learn better. Then also these other buttons, so there's one to show some kind of hint. Like I said these exercises are meant to be made after watching the lecture. So over here I'm basically giving an int related to whatever I said in the lecture. In this case this is a super basic exercise on the variables lecture, so this is also super simple. So here it's really just saying remember the syntax for how variables are declared and remember how code is case sensitive. Then for some reason no matter how hard I try I cannot complete the exercise, if so I can always show the solution. And up here it shows right away, so the solution is this, int speed equals 5. So now I can either do it myself or click on apply solution and this will actually apply the solution. So the files over here in the project files, these will be overwritten with ones that have the actual solution. I made that so you can actually see the final solution before ending the exercise. Or alternatively, you can just stop, which is basically just going to delete these files from the folder. But over here, let's just complete. So over here, the issue is just speed has to be equals to five. Let it compile. And if there it is, exercise completed. All right, awesome. So we can complete the exercise and back into the list and we do see, yep, we have completed that exercise and we have these more left to do. So I genuinely hope that this will help people learn better by actually doing things. But this is also just one part of everything that I'm building. So I'm building the exercise, the companion window down here, which is going to hopefully provide some much more helpful messages whenever there's an error or something that isn't quite right. And then like we saw, if we select the lecture, over here there are two more types. So there's an FAQ. So these are the frequently asked questions. 
So a bunch of questions, again, all related to that specific lecture. So in this case, the very most lecture. So the goal is watch a lecture, pay attention, then come here and basically get a refresher on the various things. So in this case, what example is a variable? A variable is basically a container for the data. So I highly encourage people after watching each lecture to come here and watch all the frequently asked questions. And then of course, there's also a really nice quiz. So this one again, some simple questions like what is the primary purpose of a variable in C-sharp? So is the purpose to name a function, to store data, to execute commands, or to create new data types? And in this case, yep, a variable, the goal, the primary purpose is indeed to store data. So yep, that is correct. And here is the answer with a bunch more detail. So variables are containers for data and so on. So with all of these windows and all this stuff, I really hope that this C-sharp course will be really awesome for anyone who wants to learn. And I'm going to cover topics from beginner to advanced. So no matter how much you know about C-sharp, hopefully you will learn something with this course and with these tools. I really do believe that you actually learn by doing rather than just blindly watching a course. So this is why I'm putting so much work into building all this. But also building all this obviously is a lot more work than just making the videos. So that is why I'm going to take a little bit longer to get everything done. So it's still going to take a little bit. But if you're interested, you can go to the link in the description to sign up and I'll let you know when the course is read. Also a note for these windows, as you might have seen, these were actually built over here with UI Builder. So I'm using the UI toolkit. So right now I'm super busy working on the course, but after I'm done, when I get back to regular tutorials, this is definitely going to be one topic that I want to cover. I've been researching and learning how to use it in order to build all this, and I've been pretty happy with just how useful this is. UI Toolkit is actually quite usable by now, so definitely stay tuned for a tutorial on that sometime in the future. And just a quick mention, the Asset Store is having the Unity Awards asset sale for just two more days. So if you need anything, any tools, any assets, any kind of thing, then definitely go ahead and check it out. Since these are all the assets that have won awards, pretty much all of these are awesome. Like for example, just looking at this one, I highly recommend Feel, I highly recommend Text Animator. I use both of these in making my game Dinky Gardens. These are super awesome. Feel helps you make your game a lot more polished and Text Animator helps any kind of text pop out and tons more really useful tools. So if you need anything, check it out in the link in the description. And if you want to learn about 70 Unity tools or features, then check out my Ultimate Unity Overview. This covers a mountain of stuff, including many things you might not even know exist. Okay, so now I gotta get back to work on the C-Sharp course. Still not sure when I'll be able to get it done, but hopefully sometime within February. I really hope this course with these interesting exercises and questions, I really hope this will help people learn, whether they're beginners or intermediates. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.